Hey everybody, Dave Williamson here, ToyCarCollector.com. That's right, the website is ToyCarCollector.com for all your red line needs. Come on over and take a look at all my red lines for sale. It's really fabulous and the pictures are fantastic. Also, I have a website, RedlineCollector.com. That's RedlineCollector.com. Now this is video number one, two, three, four. The final video in the series for this collection that I bought at the Indianapolis Hot Wheels National Convention. It was a fabulous time. I really didn't buy a lot at the convention, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But this is the final video. I'm going to go through the best cars I got in this collection. And also at the end, if I have enough time, I'm going to go through the other cars that I bought at the convention. There wasn't a whole lot of them, but they, they were nice. And so let's take a look here. First of all, I wanted to tell you a little bit about this case. Now this is a 72 snake and mongoose case and you might not be able to tell that it is super dirty well not super dirty actually i take that back it's really not too bad and the pictures are nice on both sides it's an actually really pretty darn good shape but i will need to clean it up now this case was hugely dirty and i did clean it up as a matter of fact the back of this case had masking tape all over it and uh i got up early one morning and decided i wanted to clean it so the first thing i did is i attacked it with this ronson oil lighter fluid to get all the sticky stuff off there so if you're not if you're if you're a young guy don't be messing with this ask your dad to take care of it for you and then i cleaned it with this i've never tried this before barkeeper's friend liquid soft cleanser this thing cleaned all the dirt and crap and grease and icky black spots off of this thing for the most part it is nice and clean now now it did take a little bit of the color off but not too bad it's got a nice satiny finish now and nice and clean now i gotta go and clean the inside of it because it's still dusty in there so i'm pretty happy with the results i achieved on that cleaning of that case and that took about an hour and oh by the way I wearing short pants so that is my leg right there all right let's get over and take a look at the cars all right we're gonna start this show with the beatnik bandit now if you'll notice I'm using these plastic containers these are the same plastic containers that I ship people's cars to them in and they protect your car really fantastically you can put them in there and uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with this. I'm not going to talk too much about that right now. But these are really fantastic plastic boxes. Now, when I was at the convention, I learned about another new fantastic plastic box. And that's this. I bought some of these from a guy. I can't really tell you where he got them from. I'm exploring that now to find out where I can get more of them. But you have to unfold them. And then you got to... You got to bend everything over and the flaps over and stuff. Straighten it out. It's pretty darn cool. He had his entire selection of cars for sale at the convention in these little plastic boxes and it looked fantastic i don't know if i took a picture of it or not but man did it look fantastic let me just show you an example here of what this looks like and i used some today to put some heavyweights in and put them on my shelf and then you can stack the cars up now you, you there is like a, a line down here on the bottom so you, you don't want to have to look at that but, um, you know, these, you know, they stack up not so, you know, okay. But take this and you take your beatnik band or whatever and you put it in this box and it looks fantastic. And then you can stack them up and put them on a shelf. You can put them on the back of a shelf or just about anywhere. And it just kind of looks neat. What do you think? That's pretty cool. Just set it down there like that. Put a bunch of them. And he had like a whole display, like a whole bunch of them with little tiny round price stickers on them. It looked really fantastic. So I'm going to look into getting some of those. Those are pretty neat. I did buy 100 or so from the guy there. But I brought everything back. See, what I did is I went through the collection that I bought, and I took all the best cars, and I put them in these containers. Look at that. There's the, there's the custom Barracuda and Copper. Now, Hong Kong, this is Hong Kong car, so it's going to have a little toning on this on it. But it's this one is really not bad at all. It is in fantastic shape. Look at that. It's got a nice glow to it. Good color, nice base. That's a great car, custom Barracuda. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I was happy to get that one. That is a nice car. Next up, Camaro. I got these in alphabetical order in my little tray that I keep them in. And this is a green US Camaro. And you know how hard it is to get a US Camaro in any kind of condition. And this one is super, super nice. Look at that shiny motor, wood operates just right. That's a great car right there. These things don't sell. These things are expensive when you buy them individually. And to get one this nice is not easy. All right, next car up is Custom Cougar. Custom Cougar. This one is a Hong Kong car as well. Something's going on here with the hood. Doesn't seem to sit down 
all the way. Not sure what. It's slightly bent a little bit, maybe. It's kind of weird. Never seen, really seen that before. Well, now it's sitting down. I don't know what that was. It's actually a really nice shape. It's got a dark interior. I prefer the white, but that's a nice dark interior. That is a good looking car. Look at that. Olive with a black top. These are hard to get. Look at that shiny base. That is a nice, nice car. Real happy to get that. We'll put that over there and go on to the next car, which is light my, f no, what am I saying? Custom Firebird, 1968 Custom Firebird, Aqua, Hong Kong. It's a great car. Custom Firebird is a tough car. Now there's certain colors that are all over the place, like blue and uh, some other colors, but most of the colors are really tough, like your browns, your pink, lime, antifreeze. There's a lot of tough colors on this. Also, the custom Firebird comes in a blue with a blue interior and a red with a red interior. And those are super nice to have. Those are really great. Next car up alphabetically in this list of cars, this group of cars, is custom Eldorado. Custom Eldorado, come on now. This one is olive. It's olive US. Now, olive I like to refer to as either olive gold or olive green, depending on how much of that color it has in it. This one's sort of a goldish olive, and it is a beauty. Look at that. That is a nice car. You know, it's super hard to get nice cars like this. If you're, if you're like, oops, if you go on eBay and stuff, you'll notice that there just are not a lot of minty, minty cars. Now, years ago, I had tons of mint cars for sale, and uh, they're just getting so hard to, to find that I just don't have that many mint cars for sale. And they sell like right away they are hot cakes like hot cakes at the uh, at the waffle house man they go out the door all right next one up diora diora and aqua aqua diora it's got original boards look like they got been leaned on a little bit there kind of sloping down on both sides but that's a really nice car aqua diora aqua diora that's a nice car next we got a Python, Python in green, Hong Kong version with a white interior. That's a good looking ride right there. It looks like it just came out of the package. Got good color. That is a nice, nice piece. Next up, I guess that's all the 68s I have from this lot. Into the 69s, Rolls Royce. That's funny. Oh, I guess most of the, you know, because this is sort of an alphabetical layout, and these are the best cars from the collection. As you can see that most of the other cars were not as nice. So what I did when I put the collection together uh, to pack up and ship, you know, bring home with me on the plane, I took all my favorite cars and all the more valuable cars and I set them separately and put those in my carry-on luggage. So what you're seeing here today, right on this video, is all the best cars from that collection. And there... There they are, 69 Beach Bomb Aqua with white interior. I've actually been having trouble finding a nice one of these. I just recently bought one in a blister pack, but it had bad paint on the front. So this was a really nice find for me. Upgrade my Aqua Beach Bomb with white interior. Although Aqua is kind of a common color for the Beach Bomb, they're mostly dark interior. And the ones that I've found with a white interior have always had some issues of some type next up 70 so there really was only two really nice 69s in the collection that were kind of in the mint and more expensive uh, area here we got a 70 custom nomad or classic nomad i should say very nice purple not a mint car but very nice and purple of course is very desirable everybody loves a purple car this one looks real good like that Speaking of purple, let's put this down and that down. Next car up, Heavy Chevy. Heavy Chevy is a car that, man, oh man, I tell you what, you put the Heavy Chevy up for sale and they are gone like the wind. They blow out of here like dust. And they go, because this is a popular car. And look at those perfect stripes. That is amazing. They just You just don't find them like that. And the number on the side, now this is going to be a keeper for me because look how perfect that number is on the side. You know, when you... Have they, when you're getting a lot of cars on a regular basis, you know, you look at everything and, you know, you want everything to be as perfect as possible. And that's really why I got into the buying and selling of Redline Hot Wheels so many years ago, over 25 years ago, almost 30 years ago, because I just, 
I just love the things and I just I'm addicted to buying them and of course you can't keep them all so you got to sell some and buy some more and sell some and buy some more it's just an endless cycle all right next up Mighty Maverick Mighty Maverick 1970 Mighty Maverick is probably the car from the well it's the best it's got the best paint of all the it's not even really a spoiler let me start over the spoiler series this is not really a part of it because it doesn't have the numbers on the side and the engine's not sticking out of the hood it's too bad they didn't do that with this car but i feel, always feel like it's a part of the spoiler series but it's not so anyway the mighty maverick uh, for all the u.s cars really has like the most beautiful paint and the most wide uh, uh, variety of colors it's really the first when i was started collecting in the 90s or early 90s late 80s it was the first car that i managed to find 12 different colors of and that were all really pretty and i still have all those cars today i think maybe i have 16 colors now i might be missing the gold i think i sold somebody my gold one but that's a, that's a tough color and then the uh of course then this the u.s cars and then the hong kong ones that's a like a whole nother ball of wax the hong kong cars because they have different colors and different shades and and it's so hard to get a mighty maverick in a in a, in a perfect paint job all right next up the 70 mod quad 70 mod quad here's another car that's real tough to get in perfect condition the mod quad the colors are beautiful colors and then of course you got to deal with the chrome you got two big motors there you want those to be shiny as all get outs these are not bad this is not bad at all a little shinier than normal but uh not like super shiny you can get those in like a mirror shiny every once in a while but that's pretty scarce wouldn't count on that it's got a nice space on it. it's a beautiful car you get the right color combination with the right condition and it is a fabulously beautiful car next up the seasider the seasider yeah this is a beauty look at this this is a lime seasider look at that color that is good color on this thing base is nice it's got all the black on the front it's got the black on the sides this one's all these are always chipped down here on the bottom pretty much let's see a little chip down there that's pretty much normal but this one has like no toning on it and with a seasider it is really tough to get a seasider with no toning this one is a beauty look at that i love that absolutely love that at one time i sold all my 1970 models so i could spec i could focus more on 68s but now i'm collecting the 70s again and that's definitely going to be a keeper because it's a beauty all right here's stepping up to 1971 here's the bug eye in blue which is a very very popular color nice to get a shiny base nice to get a beautiful blue paint job it's a really nice car a little dusty but it's overall that is a really nice car it's got the two vents on the top some of them are smooth on the top and do not have the vents on the top all right here we are hey check this out we got a bifocal in the collection i forgot there was a bifocal in this collection bifocals you always whenever you're looking at a bifocal you got to check and make sure there's no um a that sometimes the metal will crack either the top or the bottom this one is in fine shape beautiful top is beautiful it's got the clear hood not the blue hood and it's got the injectors some of them come without anything a decoration down the what is it down the middle there i think where they have no injectors and this one is got let's see got both sides yep got both sides a sticker on there this is a beautiful car very beautiful car hard to get one this nice that is a beauty this is a kind of car when i put this car up for sale it'll be sold in an hour maybe i need to be a little higher in the price maybe they, that's why they sell too fast but people like my stuff people like my stuff all right, here's a green classic cord. The classic cord. Looks like it's got some a lot of toning on the side there. Can you see it? It's got a little peppering in the paint there, a little roughness. But still nice, dull motors. Still nice condition. Nice green cord. Ooh, that's really toned on the side there. Now this video is probably a little darker than most of my videos because I'm doing it a little later at night than I normally do. It's a little gray outside. There's no sun streaming in through the window. But we'll find out starting to get to, to the springtime around here. So we can start doing this stuff a little bit later at night. 
Now here's a car that I've been looking for for quite a while, a light green noodle head. Noodle head in light green. This, I love the color, light green. Look at that, that is pretty. Really love that. Yep, that's a nice car. Been looking for that for a while. Light green noodle head. They're hard to find. They are absolutely hard to find. All right, there we go. Snake and Mongoose. Snake and Mongoose have been killer, killer popular lately. Used to be not as popular as they are now. This car has gotten more and more popular. This one's cool. It's got the decals applied to it. Variety of them. I think I got a matching. Look at that. Okay, so that one's got all those wins decals on it so does this one so now we got the matching set where it kind of went crazy with the snake and mongoose that's that is fantastic that is fantastic so those two match and the nice thing about this collection is that there were two sets of snake and mongoose and they have all five stickers on them <laughs> that's great all five stickers it's hard to get all five stickers on a snake and mongoose that one's a little crooked Sad to see that, but um, man, oh man, look at that. I wonder if there's a way that you can, if anyone knows a way, can you soak that sticker and have it come off completely and replace it? That would be interesting to know. I don't know. I'm not going to try it. I have tried too many things with Hot Wheels and ruined a bunch of Hot Wheels. I can tell you that. Here we go with, oh, oh there's a black wall stuck in there. Okay. The reason I put this in with this batch is because I just I just really like this model. I don't know, something about this funny money. You know, the funny money with the gray one from 72 is, you know, they're everywhere. Everybody's got one. But this uh, later model, I think 76, they're, they're kind of tough. Or 77, 78, kind of tough. I always like that one. So I put that aside. Okay, and then we've got the Snake and Mongoose from 71. Snake and Mongoose 2. These are really tough to get, especially in this fine condition. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. That is a fine automobile. And here is the other one. Blue. Mongoose 2. Nice. Nice color. Nice stickers. Those flame stickers, they get torn all up. Crazy torn up. And so getting those in good shape is nice. Now... Okay, all right, that is the end of all the cars from the collection. I believe that's it. The only thing else that was in that collection that was some corgis and it was a Batmobile and a Batboat and some other cases and stuff. But that is pretty much what was in that collection. And they were nice. I think the total was about 160 red lines. Maybe a few more, a few less, but it was a fantastic collection. If you if you get out there and you advertise like crazy, you just might run into a collection like this. It's not unusual. There are a lot of them out there. Hard to get from people, though, because, you know, they're really attached to them after all these years. But they are definitely worth looking for. You're not going to find them at a garage sale, I can tell you that. And I have to get out there and run some ads and stuff, maybe Craigslist or something. So that's the end of that. But let's take a look at some of the things I picked up. I didn't really get that many things. I bought four blister packs at the convention. Now, when you go to the convention, what happens there is you have a thing called room-to-room -room trading. Now, room-to-room -room trading is, a, is where guys bring the cars they want to sell and just set them up like, kind of like a flea market stall. And then you get to go through and look at uh, what they have for sale. Now, there were about 190 rooms altogether that I got to go in and out of during the uh, five-day convention. But only uh, less than 20 of those actually had red lines. And in those rooms, you'll find anything from like a display like this, this many cars, all the way up to an entire room full of red lines. Now, unfortunately, the rooms that have an entire room full of red lines typically don't really have anything fantastic. They have good stuff, just not fantastic like this. And so, uh, you know, you can become quite frustrated. But when you do find something you really like, like in my case, I found this red Hong Kong Ford J car, uh, you're not going to get a bargain on it. Let me just put it that way. You're going to pay, you're going to pay up and you're going to pay up dearly because when you get cars this nice, you're talking about cars that uh, people have had and it took them forever to find 
and they're not letting them go easily. So, you know, you can expect to really pay up. Now, this this is one in particular. I really wanted this red Hong Kong. These things are super, super hard to get in Hong Kong, which is the one that has the body line that separates there. Anyway, I just love this Hong Kong, so I bought that. And then I went into another room, and I found this blue Ferrari. Now, sometimes you go in a room, and there'll be a bunch of cars, but you don't see anything you really like right off. But then you look really close, and you're like, dang, look at that. That is beautiful. So you got to look at everything. You got to look at everything. That's, and then you'll find some things that are just really beautiful. Typically, I like this Ferrari 312P 1970. This thing has just got the stripes are beautiful. The paint is beautiful. The chrome is gorgeous. And then you ask the price, and it's usually shocking. There's no bargains. I can guarantee you there is no bargains at a Hot Wheels convention because there is no reason to put a bargain on a beautiful car because there are many, many guys who want to buy it. Here's another good example. Look at this. Here's an Indy Eagle. Now, if you look at it like Indy Eagles, if you put a nick, if you paint, if it's an aqua Indy Eagle and it's got a nick on it, it's like a $20 or less car. But uh, we find a perfect purple one like this with decals, original decals that have been applied perfectly. Now you're talking like 125, 150 bucks. That's just the way it is. Now, I don't like to talk about prices too much, but I'll give you just a little hint here or there. Alrighty, if you want to know prices on red lines, just come on over to my website, toycarcollector.com, and you'll see the prices. Give me a call, and uh, you can start your collection, fill in your collection, or whatever you want to do. Here's a Diora. I always buy Dioras whenever I find them, especially with perfect surfboards on the back. Whether I need the car or not, I can always use the perfect surfboards for a car. But this one is particularly nice, aqua. It's got dull base, but the paint is real pretty. Look at that, real pretty. So I think at the time I went into somebody's room and they had these two cars. They had a lot of cars, but these were the only two. You know, a lot of times you go into a room and you want to pick out something, for crying out loud. You can't just walk out with nothing. And this snake, too, I picked up. It was an interesting uh, situation because it had, I think it had, oh, that's mongoose. Let's see. This car came with a sticker sheet. Yeah, here it is. I think it came with this sticker sheet. No, not this one. I guess that's another sticker sheet I got with the other set. This car came with a uh, full sticker sheet. So that's what I really wanted was a full sticker sheet. And this car is very nice. And I, typically I will save up a car like this until I find like a mongoose to go with it that's got the same number of stripes on it so it can become a nice pair. And then that, put that aside there. All right, let's see. Oh. And then, uh, you know, it's not just Hot Wheels at the convention. So one fellow's room I was in, I saw this car and I thought, hey, that's pretty neat. I got to have that. It's a, what is that, a Maserati or something? I don't know. I'm not really sure what it is. I just thought it was super cute. A little slot car, hardly used. Beautiful condition. I think it was like 50 bucks. Bought that, brought it home. Awfully cute. Awfully cute. And here's another oddball piece I got. Remember that said, if you watch my video about all the stuff I brought home from the convention, you saw the Aurora Speedline set. It was a dragster set, which came with two Indy cars. Go figure that one out. Anyway, th there are, I believe, five Indy cars in the set, or six. I think maybe six. This one's a Formula Cooper Maserati. And uh, th they come with either these big old giant plastic tires or rubber tires. And most of them are in like a brown or a pinkish shade. But this one, this particular set, and the reason I bought the set so I could get the cars, was it had a purple one. And I have never seen a purple one before. I don't believe I've seen a purple one. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anytime you see something unusual that you haven't seen before, you should go ahead and pick it up. Because you may never see it again. This one is the Ferrari. And Formula Ferrari. And that's pretty cool. So those are... Speedline cars, and I will be having some videos about Speedline cars in the future because they are just so darn cool, and I got a bunch of them. Got some sticker sheets to go with my cars, like that one, and look at this one. This is just got a single mongoose sticker on it. It's kind of neat. You can find little odds and ends like this when you go to the convention, a little snake mongoose, and that is about it. And, of course, I got a bunch of other stuff, but... My main three cars that I bought at this convention are, da-da, 
Pulse 442s. Hey, what a way to go. I walked into a room. I can't even imagine. I wasn't the first guy who came into the room, so I can't imagine what they might have had before I got there. But uh, there's a hair hanging off the bag of this. I can see it right now. A magenta 442 with original stripes. Look at that. That's a beauty. Oh my gosh. And they, yeah. Again, if you're at the convention, you see something you like, you pretty much just have to buy it. You gotta choke up the cash and uh, hold your breath. Here it is, yellow, 442. I got three 442s from the same person. I was very fortunate, very lucky. This one has the large stars, original. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Yellow. Now, yellow, it's got a little toning to it, but it is it is nice. It's just a little dark on the driver's side, really. It is very, very nice. It is so hard to get a yellow 442. I do love my 442s. And third and final 442. Look at that rose. This one glows. Look at that. That is so sweet. This is why you go to a Hot Wheels convention. You get there early and you uh, talk to everybody. Usually to get cars like this, you have to know somebody, talk to somebody, find somebody, all of the above. Oh, dear. I better not mess with that right now. Get that sticker straightened out and stuck down. Isn't that a beauty? Look at that. That is so beautiful. Olds 442. All right, this this is the drool part of the, the video. I'm running out of steam, but look at that. Oh my gosh. 442, the holy grail of early Hot Wheels, the 1971 Olds 442. These are beauties. Now, if you go back to my last October, October 2015, and watch my video from the convention called Redline Blister Pack Liberation, you can see a fellow, a very dedicated Hot Wheels collector, open five of these out of Blister Pack. He had to do that in order to get the most perfect loose cars in existence, and he did it. It was quite a feat. So go back to October Hot Wheels convention, Redline Liberation. You can see that. It's very, very neat. You'll never see that again, it's pretty sure. But anyway, there's the uh, 442s, and it's, it concludes the number four in the video series of the Redline Collection I brought home from the Hot Wheels Nationals 2016, April 2016. It was a great time, and I hope you enjoyed my videos. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. I love the thumbs up. Leave comments below, and be sure to subscribe. And I'm just about to 1,000 subscribers. So thanks a lot for that. I appreciate you coming by and watching my videos. I got a lot more videos to make. Wish I had more time to make them. I'd like to make one every day, but that's never going to happen. But I do enjoy making them because it really gives me an opportunity to talk about the cars. And I, I love the cars and I love to talk about them. So come on back and check it out. Appreciate it and you have a great day.